Hello and welcome to this section of the MATLAB Tutor. In this uh, section we're going to talk about sine, cosine, logarithms, and a few other functions when dealing with complex numbers. The bottom line to take away is MATLAB understands complex numbers. It will return a complex result when needed and uh, basically all the magic happens behind the scenes. So before we get to that I wanted to e explore one more function with you that I uh, would like to cover and that is the conjugate. When you take the conjugate of a complex number. What it should do is return another complex number but just with a negative sign inserted uh, in front of whatever the imaginary part is. So the conjugate of 3 plus 5i is 3 minus 5i. The conjugate of 3 minus 5i is 3 plus 5i. So basically when you take the conjugate of something it's just flipping the sign of whatever the imaginary part actually is. If you try to take the conjugate of a real number like 4 then the answer is just going to be real because the conjugate only makes sense if you have a complex number. If you take the complex number of a pure imaginary guy, then it's just going to stick a negative out in front of the imaginary portion. So the conjugate function in MATLAB works exactly how you would expect. Now there are some other basic math functions that you use all the time. We've already talked about exponentials. We can, uh, we can make these guys complex. We can have, if I wanted to, 2 minus 3i. So I can say e to the power of 2 minus 3i. MATLAB understands that. It does all the calculations and it's going to return the answer to you in a, uh, in a rectangular form. So if you need to convert from complex exponential form to rectangular, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so you can put anything you want into the, into the exponential. If it were just negative 3i, it's going to return the proper complex answer. Same thing is true of logarithms. Um, logarithm of, you know, obviously a number like 5, we expect it to return a number. What about logarithm of 5i? Um, most low-end calculators won't know what to do with that, uh, but MATLAB understands complex number. It'll return the pure complex result uh, for you, no problem. Another thing that happens a lot of times with students is on a low-end calculator, what if you take the logarithm of negative 3? Well, most calculators will return an error because if you look at the plot of the logarithm, it's not defined at all if you try to pass any negative arguments to it. In other words, the curve just stops when you get to 0. If you try to pass an argument of negative 3 or anything less than 0, you just get an error because it's not defined. Well, in reality, when you get to higher math, you realize it is defined. It's just the answer is complex. So you can take the logarithm of negative numbers. You can take the logarithm of imaginary numbers. Um, you can take the logarithm of complex numbers, which have real plus an imaginary part. And MATLAB understands all this stuff and basically does everything behind the scenes. So exponential and logarithms are taken care of. And finally, I guess sort of the broad thing is, just so you know, uh, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, any of the trigonometric functions that you've been dealing with, um, they all work just fine if you decide for whatever reason you need to pass a complex argument to, which you get to in higher math. You try to take a sine of a complex number in a low-end calculator, you get an error. But MATLAB understands all that. It understands complex analysis, so you can pass um, any kind of complex guy to, uh, to any of the trig functions. Instead of sine, let's make this tangent. Okay, and it'll it'll calculate the result here. So, for instance, this guy, the answer we got is pure imaginary. When we take the sine of two minus three i, well, i, we had a complex result. So this is sort of a catch-all section just to explain to you that no matter what function you really use, I think it's a good rule of thumb. Any of the functions in this section, any of the functions that you might find inside of the help browser, you know, later on down the road, if you're using some other function that you just happen to look up and you need to use it. Chances are MATLAB will totally be fine if you pass any kind of complex arguments to any function that, that it basically has. If it's, if it's legal, if it's possible, MATLAB understands it and it's going to return the proper answer um, uh, in, in complex form. And as always, if you only wanted the real part of this guy, the real part of the sine of you know, 2 plus 3i, um, then you could pull that off by just wrapping it with real. So it's going to take the sign of this complex number and you're only taking the real part so it only returns a number. right? So that's how you could do that. If you only wanted the imaginary part, then you would return the imaginary part. And of course, just to check our work, we could just go and see that the sign of this guy is 9.15 minus 4.16i. So that's why I returned these guys here. So 
play with MATLAB a little bit, uh, pull out some of the standard functions, go do a base2 logarithm, go look at secants, go look at the hyperbolic functions is, a, is another great example. Go, go and stick some complex numbers into those and see what MATLAB does. If it's mathematically legal, it's going to return the complete complex result for you. And as you can see here, it's very intuitive. You just stick an I out there, MATLAB understands what's going on, and it computes the proper result.